Mars lander. We have a wing lens cap at this time. For Mars lander, this is Voyager 1. Picture is looking good, Bryce. Uh, Roger. Proceeding to phase three of the EVA. The voices you hear are astronaut Dave Higgins in the command module and Colonel Bryce Randolph, the first man to set foot on Mars. Get to the door. And now you see it. He's preparing to plant the flag. What a fantastic moment this is. Looking good. Looking good, babe. Roger, advise space calm. I estimate soil density, point niner. Roger. Copy, point niner. On schedule, Bryce. EVA still camera set. Final on. Roger. Proceeding to phase four, EVA activity. Voyager one. Dave, get on the laser, advise space calm. <laughs> Something's wrong. Something's gone wrong. Shh, Gail, it's all right. One moment, please. We seem to... We'll hear the voice of Kurt Anderson, director of the Mars mission. This is Space Command. We regret we have lost UHF communication with Voyager 1. This includes picture and voice. However, there is no cause for alarm. We are in contact with the mission by means of our laser communication system. Space Command will issue continuous reports on the progress of the mission. We repeat, there is no cause for alarm. To climax this busy week of news, the president today unveiled his emergency economic program, which included massive cuts in federal spending during the remainder of 1981. Significantly, the president made no mention of cutting the U.S. space budget, long a target of his. We can assume that the president, like the public, feels more kindly towards space in the light of yesterday's success on Mars. Call the director. Tell him to meet me in the projection room. Space Command reports that Colonel Randolph's lander has rejoined Voyager 1, and now the two astronauts are safely on their way home. Voyager 1, Voyager 1, this is Spacecom on Laser 5. Do you read me? Spacecom, this is Voyager. Oh, man, skip away a bit. Sorry, Dave, we've been working around the clock on the problem. How you doing? Pretty shaky. Did you decide anything? Negative, Dave. Continue executing emergency plan Delta. Maintain UHF silence. What about ER-1? We're considering it. Do it, Kurt. You've got my vote. And Bryce's. You know that. I'll decide tonight, Dave. Meantime, you try to get some sleep. Space, calm out. Kurt, for what it's worth, we're all voting for ER-1. I know that. My God, am I the only man in this building hung up in morality? 
a lie to find the truth. Don't call it a lie. Call it what it is, Kurt. It's a gamble for time. All right, all right. If we lose, then we can confess our sins. But if we win... Oh, well, Kurt, if we win, then all of the sacrifices of the past 20 years haven't been for nothing. This Eddie Reese... Does he know he'd have to give up his own identity? He doesn't know anything. He doesn't have to know the full story at first. If he proves he can do the job, then we commit. All right, get him in here. We'll see what he's made of. Eddie Reese. Two years younger than Bryce. Same height, same vocal range. He's got no family, no attachments, and at the moment, no job. IQ profile indicates above average intelligence. And there's a bonus you remember from his file. He was an Air Force pilot. You read all my records, sir? The rest of your record doesn't interest me, Eddie, okay? Okay. You were at Laughlin back in 1974. You ever meet Bryce Randolph there? No, sir, not really. Uh, he was uh, a senior instructor. I saw all of his lectures. And I, uh, I took a lot of kidding because I kind of looked like him then. Is that why I'm here? Eddie, what I'm about to tell you must remain top secret whether you take this assignment or not. Yes, sir. I think you know what pressure the space program has been under. And what would happen to that program if the world found out we'd had serious problems on Mars. We have serious problems, Eddie. There's something in the Martian atmosphere that we just weren't prepared for. Something that we still don't understand. Apparently, it penetrated Bryce Randolph's spacesuit. We have indications it will affect his behavior. Now, in 70 days, the mission returns. We're going to need time and dollars to find our answers. But in 70 days, the public expects to see a hero, and we must be able to show them one. Bryce Randolph will appear in public, even if someone else has to make those appearances for him. We need a stand-in, Eddie. Someone to keep the illusion alive, to keep the program alive. Do you understand the desperation of what I'm saying? Well, yes, sir, I do, but... <sighs> what good would I be? Sir, I'd be in over my head. Well, we train you, Eddie. Day and night. We'll give you the background to pull it off. Well, all right, yeah, but... My face, it's just not the same. We can make it the same. We have that capability. Surgery? Plastic injection, if we get that far. Ah, oh, you've, uh... Really thought of everything. Well, we've had this plan in our pocket a long time, Eddie. It was Bryce's idea. Bryce? That's right. He called it Emergency Replacement Plan 1. But we'll let Bryce tell you about it. Hello, ER1. This is Bryce Randolph. If you're listening to this, it's because we're in trouble. I know you're very much in the dark right now, but I hope you decide to help us. I've prepared a full course of training for you if your answer is yes. I hope it is. And that someday I can shake your hand and say, thank you, for all of us, for keeping our dream alive. Well, Eddie? It's funny. I guess the thing I'm really afraid of is uh, losing Eddie Reese. Not that he's all that much to lose. It may not come to that. If it does, I'll give you the right to bail out before we commit to surgery. Okay. I'll do the best I can, sir. My name is Kurt. Good morning, ER-1. This will continue your familiarization with my life, my behavior patterns, and the sound of my voice. Now, this phase of your training will be augmented by conscious and subliminal tapes. You will notice you have the ability to stop and start the film to enable you to practice imitating phrases as I say them. Please stop the film and repeat my last phrase at this time. Uh, uh, please stop the film and repeat my last phrase at this time. Tom Everett, space writer. Longtime friend of Bryce's. Tony Rogers, widow of astronaut Zach Rogers. Close friend of the Randolphs. 
Gail Perkins Randolph, Bryce's wife. Married eight years, no children. Does she know he's in trouble? Not yet. She's pregnant with their first child. Retention check. Sleep teach, cassette number four. What is a home and mission profile? It's a theoretical trajectory to Mars, which requires minimal energy demand, but overall mission length is 970 days. Contrast this with 152 days on parabolic trajectory of Voyager 1. Fred Myers, Astrophysics Department, Caltech. Jim Parkinson, last director of the old NASA program. General Frank Cable, space liaison office of the Pentagon. It is difficult for me to evaluate my father, even at this time. He was 50 when I was born. He was a man of strong principle who believed in God and the McGuffey Reader. He was a man of strong principle who believed in God and the McGuffey Reader. Onboard stabilizer control. Auto descent. Command and override. ACA mode control. Horses got side panel. Spectroscope panel. Right and left retro switches. Laser comm frequency control. Yes. John Phillips, International Wire Service. Colonel Randolph, the descent of your lander was behind schedule. Would you explain that? We ran into some unexpected G-pull from Demos, the Martian satellite. We adjusted orbit, made descent on the next pass. Yes. Colonel, were you alarmed at the communications failure? A negative. A laser comm has always been our primary system. It allows for instant communication. Whereas with UHF, there is a two minute, 12 second delay. Question. Just one more. How do you feel? I feel fine. Come by my office in about five minutes, Eddie. It's time to talk, Eddie. You're only halfway through your training, Eddie, but I think you can pull it off. What do you think? I don't know. I... Bryce feels like a part of me now. I... I guess if I had to, I could do it. Well, you have to. I want you to decide about the surgery today. I don't get it. If Bryce doesn't get back... Bryce until... isn't coming back, Eddie. He never was. What? I'm sorry. We didn't want to scare you off until we were sure. But now you have to know. This is where we blacked out the TV picture. We, in this building. And here's why we did. Roger, run. Babe, get on the laser, advise. Spacecom. Cut the picture. You copy, Dave? Cut the picture. Uh, Roger. What's happening? I think we got a problem here. I'm reading a funny odor. Seems to be penetrating my suit. Bryce. Bryce, do you read? Uh, Dave, I think we're in some trouble now. My legs are going to sleep on me. Get back to the lander, babe. Negative. Negative. I can't move the legs, Dave. Numbness spreading upward now. Rapidly. Can't. Listen. Before can't talk. Get spectro sample. Find out. Get spectro. Pull this off and we'll send you out to pasture with a new face. You don't have to be Bryce Randolph forever. You got a plan for that, too? I'll let you read it. Look, we're getting pretty close. We've worked out the recovery switch and a thousand other details. You'll be on your feet tomorrow. So we want you to be part of all our planning. Make sure we don't miss anything. Hey, what about Gail Randolph? You told her yet? I've been avoiding that. She's very dear to all of us. Kurt, you gotta tell her. I know. I will. 
And I did it all myself. It's a prize price when he comes back. Oh, it looks fine. Just fine. You think you'll like it? I want it all to be so special. Gail, can we talk? Yeah, in a minute. You, you pretend that you're Bryce seeing it for the first time, okay? Well, what, do you, what do you think you'll say? Gail. Gee, Gail, you did this by yourself? You won't believe it. Well, he doesn't think that... He doesn't think too much of me, does he, Kurt? That's not true. I always seem to let him down. Didn't, didn't he ever say, uh, I'm disappointed in Gail? That's what I picture him saying. Gail's a mistake and the baby's a mistake. Well, that's what he said to me. But, but he's right. Probably. He always is right. It's, it's just that I thought that, that the baby... Oh. <laughs> I'm trying to hang on to him, but I don't know if I can. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, you got a fever. No, just nerves, pure nerves. Well, I'm going to get Dr. Wiley over here. In the meantime, I'd like you to get right in bed and bundle up. <laughs> Are you everybody, Skipper? Gail, please. Will you help me till he gets back? Of course I will. what he's doing right now, this minute. Sleeping. Probably sleeping. Hmm. You should have told her. I just couldn't. I didn't think she could cope with it. Kurt, recovery team meeting confirmed. 0900. Thank you. Look, Kurt, it's four days till splashdown now. How long do you think you can stall? I'm not stalling. I'm gambling for time, remember? I think we owe her that much. Security is the name of the game. Aside from those of you in this room, only eight other individuals have any knowledge of ER-1, and I'd like to keep it that way. And here's how we'll do it. At a thousand miles out, Dave Higgins will break UHF silence. We'll put him on the air. Full TV coverage. Just before re-entry, he'll report a malfunction in the auto descent system. We'll request Dave make a manual re-entry. We'll set up his retro burn so that he will intentionally overshoot the splashdown area by a hundred miles away from the recovery fleet here, but within 10 miles of our base on Baker Island. Waiting on Baker will be Jack Phillips and a helicopter rescue team. Inside that helicopter, excuse me, yes? Very good, send him in. We're gonna pause for just a moment so that our most important staff member can take his place with us. I believe you all know Colonel Bryce Randolph. Bryce? Bryce? Bryce, is it time? Easy, Gail. Easy. Huh? Now listen to me. You're a very sick girl. Unless you improve by this evening, I'm going to have to move you to a hospital. No. Is that clear? Now I want you to stay in bed. Tony is here. She'll give you all the news when you wake up. Mm -hmm. Oh, any better? No. Make sure she keeps warm. I'll be back in a couple of hours. Roger and copy, boys. Where are they? They're about to start re-entry. Copy. Roger, we're on it. Good luck to us all. Please calm, understand your problem. Out of descent mode is disengaged. Manual override is green. Standing by for re-entry retrofire at their command. Affirmative, Voyager 1. We have 30 seconds to retro burn at the mark. 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 All recovery units, stand by for splashdown revise. Thank you. 
Make sure it is open. Oh, man, is that a beautiful sight? They're down. They're down. Space Command reports that Voyager 1 has made a successful splashdown. We apologize for lack of live picture, but the report is that the recovery chopper from Baker Island is now picking up the two astronauts. But he will be home very soon. He'll be landing on the carrier in just a few minutes. Now, you stay warm. I'll be in the kitchen. I can see them now. The chopper is approaching the carrier. They're getting closer. The men are all lined up at attention. Cameras everywhere. Here they come. Here they come. The chopper is touching down. He's on the deck. Doors are open. And out steps Dave Higgins. And there's Colonel Randolph. Bryce Randolph. The first man to set foot on Mars. Thank you. This is a great moment for us. Coming home. We feel so... Fortunate to have sailed a ship to a bright island called Mars. Four years ago, Neil Armstrong took a giant leap for mankind. We hope and we believe that this mission is another great move forward in man's oh. understanding of the universe and of himself. At this time, at this time, we'd like to thank our support teams around the world, and we would like the pleasure of an honest to God hot bath. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. But we thank you, not only... Yes, sir, I know we're on the radio. What I meant was, considering your past feelings about our work, we've been afraid you underestimated its importance. Well, that's wonderful, Mr. President. If what we've done has made you reconsider, then this mission has been very much worthwhile. What was that, sir? Yes, sir, she's fine. Yes, of course, I'll see her today. It's very kind of you to be concerned. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir, he's right here. Would you hold on, please? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. That. that was brilliant. You trapped the president of the United States into making a public statement of support. Yeah, and trapped myself into seeing Gail when we land. Well, is that the way you planned it all along? No. But now I think it's the only solution. Why? She needs to grow strong so we can tell her the truth. She needs her husband. She hasn't got a husband. Now she doesn't have a child either. Kurt, this is the quicksand we stepped into. Kurt, this is the trap. Help her, Eddie. You can do it. Maybe even better than Bryce himself. You're fine. You're good. 
And whatever happened is over. to do so I can tell you about Mars. Will you? I'll tell you about that tree where I carved our initials. <laughs> a tree? Sure. Great big oak tree with your initials on it and a great big heart. Why are you being so nice to me? said if I wanted to, I could. And now I want to. I did it all myself? Of course. Who else? Tell me that it, that it wasn't a mistake. That you would have been proud of our son. I would have been very proud. Falling in love all over again. Synthesizing the Martian atmosphere right here in our own laboratory. Excellent. Yes, yes. I have a question for Colonel Randolph. Bryce. Tom Everett? Yes, sir. It was nice to see you again. Uh, Colonel, you are the first genuine American hero in a decade. I wonder if you're enjoying the role. I... No, sir, I feel I've done nothing to earn all this praise. Other men, perhaps, not me. Uh, I think Bryce is being overly modest, Tom, and I'd hate for this meeting to pass so lightly over his achievement. When Bryce Randolph stepped out of his lander, knowing there were some risks, he performed, in my estimation, a supreme act of heroism. And that act must not be diminished by understandable modesty. You know that? My hand used to just be lost in yours, and now it's now it's comfortable. You better get some rest. I, I watched you on TV. Don't you want my opinion? I was very nervous. That's what I liked. <laughs> the human being and you was just popping out all over. I bet you they offer you a series. Oh, they did. Yes, a uh, situation comedy. What? Yes, it's all about an astronaut who takes his wife to Venus. And they live in a treehouse. <laughs> Come here. What? What happened to you on Mars? Hmm? You really aren't the same. 
I traded personalities with a very friendly Martian. Hey, look. I really ought to get back to the base, huh? You will take your sleeping pills. Mm -hmm. I'll be home late. Okay. Good night. Press conference tomorrow. This time it's your home. Try and undo some of the harm that you've done. Tom Everett, of all people. Your own personality's coming through. Can't you see that? We need the time, Eddie. The lab is on to something. Now I want you to try and pull yourself together. And get me out of Gail Randolph's life. Well, it's a little too late for that. How can we do that? I don't know. Face me out now if you have to. But don't make me lie to her anymore. I just can't do it, Kurt. I don't understand. You've done wonders for her. What's the problem? I care about her. That's the problem. And look, what we're doing now is wrong. It'll only make it worse for her when she finds out. Now, I can't hurt her like that, don't you understand? Please, Kurt, phase me out now before she knows. I'll try to hang on just a little longer, huh? And we'll, we'll see what we can do. Okay. Carl? Hello? I want to talk. All right. After you left, I... I tried to sleep. But my mind wouldn't let me. I kept remembering every... every minute since you came back. Every detail. And pieces kept going together. And now I'm frightened. Gail, please. No! I can't get it out of my mind now, so you... You must tell me the truth. Whatever it is, you must tell me. You promised me that. Yes. What's frightening me... is the possibility... that you aren't really Bryce Randolph. Please. Is it true? Are you my husband? is dead, Gail. He died on Mars. Get out of here. Please. Let me explain. Get out of here! Get out!
Hello, ER-1. This is Bryce Randolph. If you're listening to this, it's because we're in trouble. I know you're very much in the dark right now, but I hope you decide to help us. I've prepared a full course of training for you if your answer is yes. I hope it is. And that someday I can shake your hand and say thank you for all of us for keeping our dream alive. Now you want me to help? Yes. Did Bryce make a tape for me? Dear Gail, in case I die on Mars, they will send you a Xerox copy Gail. of me. No? No. No one gave me a choice. It isn't a matter of choice. We're committed now, all of us. Well, I'm not. Not after what's been done here. You let me believe that everything was going to be all right. That, that, that Bryce loved me and, and my baby and, and... And I found myself feeling about him as if... Oh, I just feel so ashamed. I didn't know how to tell you at first, Gail. I wouldn't ask you to go on now, but the work isn't finished. There is involved here a whole I plan. I don't care about the work. I don't care about Mars or the plan. I am not going to let you use me anymore, Kurt. I am not going to lie for you. Then what will you do? Tell the whole world? <laughs> you afraid of the truth? I am, now. Will it destroy you, Kurt? Yeah. And the program. And more important, the memory of a very brave man. I want you to leave now. Before you come to any decision, I'd like you to see a tape we have of the way Bryce died. It might help to convince you that you're not the only person who suffered. And I hate you for that. Sharon? No, and we have a security problem. You better put some more men on. I already have. What about the press conference? If we cancel, it'll only make things look worse. Let's see how she is tomorrow. Me. Eddie, under the circumstances, I think it's a bad time for Bryce Randolph to move out of his home. And I suggest you don't try it. You've done enough damage for one night. house. We're both under guard here, don't you know that? Nobody's guarding me. I can go anywhere. Tell anyone what I know. I can tear up your big master plan. I wonder if they'd let you. Do they wind you up in the morning or, or 
do they they program you with tape? Hmm? No, tape, tape, that's it. All the intimate details. Did Bryce tell you about me? Hmm? About what to expect? Did, did, he, did he wind you up and send you to me? Did he tell you about the lies that, that would make me happy and, and how to make me smile and, and laugh and how to make me love you? <laughs> Come in here. Will you please come in here? When does it end, the master plan? Uh, when they get the money they need from Congress. Uh, when they find out what happened to Bryce. What killed him. When that happens, they phase me out. Uh, they stage a boating accident. Bryce Randolph's body is never found. And they send me somewhere with a, a new face. You said you were a pilot. Yes. Why'd you give it up? I, uh, I resigned. Why? I killed three people. Houston, I uh, ejected. A uh, plane hit a house in the suburbs. Is that a reason to give up your face and your life? No. There were other reasons. It's just that nothing really mattered anymore. And lying to me, did that matter? you said about my baby, about wanting it. Why did you say those things? Because I knew you wanted to hear them. I was briefed. you lie to me last night? What? When I asked you if you were my husband, why didn't you lie? It would have been easy. I couldn't. I knew you wouldn't believe me. No, I suppose not. You really not like him at all. You must have been badly briefed. You played him much too tender, too loving. Bryce wasn't like that. I think he was. On a tape once, he talked about you. I think he loved you very much. He just didn't know how to show it. Thank you for telling me that. There's a news conference here today. What will you do? I don't know.
Good night. I'm not intruding. Well, you are a little early, Tom. How'd you get past the guards? Oh, just a reporter's trick. Before they throw me out, can I talk to you? Well, if you keep it brief. Hey, I'm sorry about ignoring you the other day. I was uh, in a fog. Perfectly understandable. Uh, what's the matter with your hand? A little minor surgery. They've been treating me for a bone infection. Uh, it's nothing serious, but it's been bothering me since Mars. I see. What was it you wanted to talk to me about? Oh, I guess it'll wait. It's just that certain changes in you have fascinated me, and I just wondered if... Uh... Oh, good morning, Gail. Nice to see you. Hello, Tom. Uh, maybe you're the one I should ask, huh? Have you noticed any changes in Bryce since he got back from Mars? Yes, he's not the same man. Oh? H how do you mean? He's, uh, more human than the Bryce I knew. More considerate, uh, gentle. <sighs> even, even silly sometimes. Must have been the air on Mars. <laughs> <sighs> well, anyway, it made him, made him do strange things. He, he even carved my initials in a tree. What do you think of that? <laughs> I think that's great. Mm. So do I. Well, excuse me. Hello. Hello. What are you doing up so late? Well, uh, they let me go shopping to the hairdresser. Me and... Agent Wilson. And it felt so good to be dressed up, I thought I'd keep it on a while. How, how was your trip? Oh, wonderful. Three closely guarded days in Washington. You'd think after a month of this nonsense, they'd stop treating us like security risks. <laughs> Why are you staring? Don't, don't you like it? Oh, it's lovely. I, I'm staring because uh, I'm glad to see you. Would you like a drink? You know, I, I thought about you a lot when you were gone. Scotch or vodka? Scotch. I think I sort of missed your company. I don't deserve that. Why? You're the only one I could talk to around here for a month. Got sort of lonely. Are you forgetting the bad scene the day I left? You talked about how glad you'd be when this was all over. No. I'm trying to apologize. And tell you that I'm glad to see you too. Tell me about your trip. Was it all that bad? No, not really. I, I made a lot of speeches, and uh, I told some very funny stories. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> and I met a cosmonaut, Igor Mietke. Very nice guy. He promised me a surprise present next week. It's incredible. I'm going to be talking like a normal husband coming home from a normal business trip. I think that's nice. You know, if I were a normal husband, and I came home and found you dressed up like this. You know what I do? Yes. 
<laughs> I take you dancing. Where? A crazy old-fashioned place up the road where people still dance holding each other. <sighs> the security guard wouldn't let us go dancing. Besides, we have to watch Kurt on the 11 o'clock news. Why? His office called. It's an order. Well, we'll just ignore it. Hmm. I don't think they'll let us. Mr. Anderson's on TV now, Colonel. I don't hear the setup. Beyond its current problems to an area of long-range benefits for all of man. Ten years from now, when Mars has been mapped and charted, when it has been colonized by scientists and engineers from Earth. One man will deserve the nation's deepest gratitude. That man is Bryce Randolph, the pioneer who led the way. On behalf of Bryce and all of us in the space program, we thank the Congress and the President for the funds granted today. Funds for our 10-year program of exploration on Mars. Well, we are victorious. ER-1 is a smash hit. Then you'll be leaving soon. Yes. It's what we both want, isn't it? Tell you what I want. I want you to take me dancing. Fine. We'll just clear it with Mr. Phillips, and then we'll go. Look, just this once. A few hours, huh? It has to be cleared. Well, we can't blame Wilson. He's, uh, just doing his job. What is your first name, Wilson? My first name, Wyatt. You, uh, you did want to go dancing. Bryce Randolph kissing his wife. It made me feel so ashamed. No. No, Eddie, you mustn't. I don't. I don't feel ashamed anymore. Please, don't let them spoil it.
Well, I'm glad you're back. You two had us worried. Well, it's good for you once in a while. Are you here to scold us or what? No, I'm here with good news for both of you. And congratulations. We know. We watched you on TV. Oh, there's more to it than that, Eddie. Much more. What? We discovered what killed Bryce. We were able to reproduce it in the lab. What was it? A substance in the Martian atmosphere composed of two elements entirely new to us. So the bright island in the sky is a death trap? For now, yes. But in six months, we'll develop materials that'll protect our people up there. And now we've got the funds to do it, thanks to you. That means you're through with him? Well, it means he's done his job, yes. The longer we keep him around, the greater the risk, like tonight. So we've decided to phase out ER-1. The boating accident? Yes. You erase him, like tape. Well, it's all right, Gail. When do you plan to do it? Well, as a matter of fact, we thought tomorrow. Tomorrow? Sunday. I was born on a Sunday. When will they be here? In about an hour. You could take me with you. I want some more coffee. Take me with you. Gail, why? It just won't work. But why? Because you'd be giving up your life for me. I'm not even real. Don't you see? I don't even exist. Eddie disappeared months ago. Bryce died on Mars, and when they change my face again, I'm nothing. I'm nobody. I won't belong anywhere. That's not true. You belong to me. <gasps> you're real. You're Eddie Reese. If you're not real, then who gave me back myself? showed me that I could be loved. Am I loved? Very much. Oh, don't let them erase that. It's out of the question. It's absolutely out of the question. No, there is no question. And nobody asked you a question, Jack. We just announced we're going together. You can't tamper with a plan now. I'm tired of your plans. What about people? You're tampering with people. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. Just say what it is you want us to do. It's very simple. You announce two deaths. You create two new identities. <laughs> just like that. You think that's simple? It's more simple than ER1, Jack. A man of your talent, it shouldn't take more than a couple of phone calls. Eddie, I can't. You're Jack, it is that simple. As long as you both know what you're doing. I'd like to hear that from you. I know what I'm doing. Gail, there's no turning back, you know. I mean, you'd leave everything behind you. I know. But that's what I want. All right, Jack, get on the phone. Kurt, where are you? Jack, get on the phone. You don't have much time. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you, Eddie. I haven't said it up till now, but I'm very grateful to both of you. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. thanks. Hey, Fred! Hey, guess who I just said hello to in that car back there? Who? The astronaut from Mars. No kidding? I wonder how he feels about this news. What news? Russians are going to Mars, too. They blasted off this morning. No, sir. No, Mr. President. We're just as surprised as you are, sir. Yes, sir? 
Well, well, no more than you know, sir. Uh, they intend to land two men about a thousand miles from our landing site. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, it does make our achievement look good. Yes, sir. I'll call you back right after I talk with Moscow. Goodbye, Mr. President. They snowed me, Kurt. I talked to Belenikov a week ago. I asked him point blank. All right, the point is, Jack, what do we do now? What we've been doing, we stall for time. No, that's no good, Jack. We can't play games with the truth any longer. They're going to die up there, just like Bryce died. Well, you can't be sure of that, Kurt. Yes, you can be sure. Well, no, there are variables. I mean, maybe the environment's different where they're landing. Maybe those suits are different. Oh, come on, Jack. Maybe, maybe they abort, they come back home, a thousand things could happen, right? Jack, they're going to die up there. I know it, and you know it. All right, so let them take their chances like we do. No, it's out. not the same thing. We know. If we don't stop them, it's murder. So what are you going to do, blow it off? I don't know. I don't know. I'm going down the wire room and cable my congratulations to the Russians. You better get on the horn and get Eddie back here just as fast as you can. You're really going to blow the whistle on, aren't you? I don't know. But if I do, I'll need Eddie, won't I? Jack, I have them in sight now. Under no circumstances are they to change the plan. Understood? Roger, understood. Is something wrong? No, no. Nothing that can't be handled from this end. You just move them out. Did they brief you on Gale? Yes, I've been briefed. Now, oh, you look grim, Carl. What, are you sad to see us go? You better hurry. You got over this chart? Ten times. All right, this is where you anchor. Huh? The helicopter will pick you up at 11 o'clock. You pull the through hole fittings and sinker. You better get started. You're behind schedule as it is. Now what's the rush, Carl? We only die once or twice. If you want to crank her up, I'll cast you off. Right. Ready? I'm glad to beat the Russians. What? They won't get there till next November. What's he talking about? Oh, something we heard on TV about the Russians going to Mars. Well, come along, Freddie, and thank you very much, Colonel. Come on, honey. Do you know about this? I... Turn on the radio. Of course you knew. You all knew. Eddie's not coming. What do you mean? Didn't you try to stop him? No, I didn't. You intentionally disregarded an order? Is that what you're telling me? That's right. By this time, Eddie should be several miles out to sea. All right. All right. We'll just get the chopper pilot on the horn here. Would you rather if I were you, Kurt? He's very loyal to me. His instructions are to take Eddie to a safe place. Based on the success of the American mission led by Colonel Bryce Randolph, two of Randolph's brothers in space, cosmonauts Rosef and Mietke, will land on the Martian surface. Touchdown is estimated within three months. They're going to let them die. Kurt, Jack, they're going to let them die up there. Come on. Eddie! Get out of my way. Eddie, it doesn't concern you. It concerns me. People dying concerns me. Come on. Without Eddie, you can't blow the whistle. That's the way I intend to keep it until you get back on this team, Kurt. Hold all the calls. This is what it's come to, huh? That now you and I have to cheat and blackmail each other. I said to hold the calls. I, I'm sorry, sir, but it's Eddie Reese. He says it's urgent. Eddie, where are you? All right, all right, calm down. Eddie, please listen to me. We're not going to let them die. Please, Eddie. 
Eddie, come in and we'll decide what to do. No. No, we're not coming in. We can't trust you anymore, you understand? You're a good man, Kurt, but you're no longer capable of telling the truth. Eddie, I don't blame you for feeling that way, but what can I do to prove you're wrong? That's easy. You tell the man, Kurt. You tell him now or you'll put it off forever. Eddie, do you know what that would mean to all of us? What it would put us through? Yes, we know. And we'll stand with you, Kurt, if you speak up now. Eddie, I wonder if I have that kind of courage left. I hope you do. I'll be out here, Kurt, waiting to hear. Waiting to tell them if you don't. Okay, Eddie. I'll try not to disappoint you. Give me the president, please. Kern, is there anything I can say that will make you cancel that call? Put it off just a little bit longer. The time for the truth isn't later, Jack. It's now. It's always been now. Sir. 